Music Matters. David Cook, my friend, how are you today? Hey, what about you? Good, man. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me over at the place and doing this. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Of course. For anybody who doesn't know, I've, I've, known, I've known David for like ever. Like I, 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 we met in like middle school and we even made music together for a little bit. Yeah. And um, we were just good friends in middle school. And then we, 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 we talked in high school too. And then we became good friends again in senior year. We had a creative writing class with uh, Mr. M- Mr. Hanson. Uh, Mr. Hanson. Shout out Mr. Hanson. Shout man. out to Mas- Mr. Hanson. But yeah. Sure. And then, I mean, we've been friends ever since. And David does, he does film compositions. He does production stuff of that nature. But yeah, it's, it's crazy to me, like, thinking about, like, the days that you and I made music together. That's so yeah. funny to think about. Uh, what was it called? Clover Revival? Clover Revival. Yeah, we had Gabe. Even before that. Yeah, way before that, dude. I mean, yeah, we've been writing music for a long time, but it's nice that, you know, to connect again and to hang out and, you know. Have you been writing a lot of stuff recently? Because I know back then you were just pretty much exclusively playing uh, guitar. What was your progression like to move to a place where you began, like, writing your own stuff so i basically i was playing guitar with resky for a while if resky was a band that i was in for some time and then um and then i kind of left you know the our singer and i we we kind of had some quarrels and didn't work out so i kind of you know got into uh dawes and figuring you know how to how to work those things out interfaces and all that the basics and once i kind of grasped that then I was like, you know what, what do I want to do, you know, with my life? Cause I'm like, I'm, I know that I want to do music, but I don't know exactly what I want to do. So then I was like, well, what's something I've always enjoyed my whole life. And it like film and video game music is something I've always enjoyed. God of war, the soundtrack for the original God of wars. Um, I mean, you know, all of the John Williams movies, all those scores, Hans Zimmer, obviously, you know, even newer scores, you know, um, Ludwig van Gorenson, I think his name, he did Black Panther and all that, but he also produces. So that's like super dope. So I was kind of like, like more he, modern stuff he produces. Yeah. He produced, oh, cool. uh, he produced Redbone. Oh, what? That's, yeah. That's badass. I didn't know that. Yeah. So he, um, the, I, so I kind of saw that and I was like, you know what? That's actually really dope. And I, I really want to go into that so i eventually kind of just really hatched it out you know i mean it cost a lot of money but i bought tons of orchestral samples and you know started working on that i've so far i as far as like actual video media projects i've worked on i've worked on two projects with a buddy of mine um justin and he uh he uh he he's He's based in LA, so he he came out of Columbia College, the film school, and so we worked on uh, a short film together. I have that on my YouTube on my website, and then um, I worked with another friend of mine, uh, Marcus, and he's pretty cool, and uh, that's that's coming out later. I think he's kind of getting that in the works, but as far as like just getting to that point to where I had people I could write for, you know, it it was a grind for sure. It was definitely a grind because, um, you know, it, it's a different world playing guitar versus, you know, orchestrating for an entire orchestra. It's yeah. an entirely different world. And, you, you know, luckily, um, luckily my girlfriend, Ronnie, she's a flute player. And so, you know, she's kind of already been around that. And not only that, but throughout high school, I was in jazz bands. So I, it's not exactly orchestral, but it's same kind of familiar concept. So... I kind of worked with that, and um, I've just been working on uh, orchestral music and then synth music as as well. I've been lately, I've been really focusing on electronic music, you know, uh, synthesizers, uh, drum machines, things like that, because I never meddled in those things before. I was purely like, I want to use acoustic instruments, you know, and so I, I saw, you know, composers a lot of composers nowadays, film composers and video game composers, they are hybrids. So they record not only just acoustic, you know, orchestral instruments, but they Uh were also recording synthesizers. I mean, Hans Zimmer is the one who made that famous. He was the kind of the, one of the first guys to do it with uh, rain man. That movie came out and he, it was like, people were like, Whoa, that's really cool. You know, you got synthesizers in a movie and it's like, you know, and then, um, the shining as well. Uh, you know, a lot of those horror movies from back in the day, 
uh, there was this lady who worked with the Moog. I can't remember her name exactly right now, but she worked with Moog synthesizers. And what she would do is she would take uh, classic orchestral parts and then transfer them over onto a Moog synthesizer and play them. And then she would write film scores for them. So a lot of the Stephen King movies she wrote for. And so I saw that and I was like, you know what? Well, I need to incorporate hybrid. I'm going to close the window. Keep okay. it on now. No worries. Um, I need to incorporate hybrid uh, you know, instrumentals into my music. So... I went ahead and bought a bunch of samples and, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a money thing for sure when it comes to synthesizers and Because all that stuff is oh like the most expensive realms of music you can like Dude, go into. Uh, I mean, you know, I have mostly VSTs, which are virtual yeah. sampled instruments, but, um, you know, I have, I have, I do have a actual synthesizer over here it's a rolling jxp mm -hmm. um i don't have it set up right now because... we'll take a picture of it and put it on the screen right yeah here. <laughs> exactly um but you know i mean working with synthesizers and stuff you know is a lot of fun um I, I, i'm not very versed in the world of like film music or mm -hmm. scoring but is it getting to a place where like because it seems to me like older movies, they generally have like exclusively orchestral mm -hmm. stores. Or it was very rare that you would see like a score that was like jazz per se or like rock. Right. And like I think that was because of the fact that like it, it almost seemed like people were like defiant against a degradation of like skill in right. um in uh in in in, in film compositions. Right. So do you, do you think like scores are moving to a place where they're more multi-genre? Because I feel like oh. more recent films have like embraced hip hop and stuff Absolutely. like the Black Panther movie and 100%. stuff. 100%. Because um, for a long time, film music was very traditional. So yeah. it was just, you know, you had the same guys. They were doing the same scores for everybody. Um, it was called the golden age of film music. You know, a lot of the really big scores you hear, um, even nowadays, you know, uh, they were written during that time and a lot of the ideas are used, but as you kind of moved on and as electronic music was kind of introduced into film scoring and then not only that, but like you said, you know, you got different genres. I mean, La La Land is one of the, one of my most favorite scores, Justin Hurwitz. It's just amazing. And it's, mm -hmm. it's all jazz, you know, it's all jazz because it's a movie about jazz. And um, like you said, you know, incorporating hip hop, and rap into movie scores it's just it's super awesome i love to see it because it's like you know we need to have a lot of diversity in yeah. film scoring you know because we i mean movies are diverse you know so like that would be an interesting concept to me if you had like hip-hop producers who were now scoring movies like right. that's something that like 10 years ago we never would have imagined absolutely but, like not. the idea of like no yeah metro boom and like making right. a making a score right yeah right Right. Yeah. No, I mean, and you know, like people have limitations, of course. I mean, it isn't easy. Not everybody who produces and writes, you know, music can do it. Of um, course. But it's definitely one of those things that's becoming more like experimental in that like, you know, if somebody said, screw it, I want to write a score where I just have like one pitch the mm. entire freaking movie, but it's all about rhythm. Right. We got a lot of, you know, rhythmic elements. To you could totally do it. Back in the day, definitely not. But today, yeah, nowadays you can. Um, I think, like, also in the age of streaming, people are starting to, like, listen to the music from their favorite the movies, movies more yeah. than they used to. 100%, yeah. I mean, Hans Zimmer is a perfect example. Oh, yeah. People love listening to, like, Interstellar mm -hmm. and all of his soundtracks. I mean, I think, I think like, a year or two ago, there was, like, a couple of weeks where I was just listening to the uh, the Dark Knight soundtrack. Just the, yeah. On, on uh, Spotify, just Dark Knight. For People like... probably thought you were insane. They're right, right. Like, right. You're blurring that right. out of your car speaker, driving the freeway. <laughs> they're like, this guy's going to go kill someone. <laughs> right, exactly. Like, he's, he's got bad intentions. <laughs> no, um, but, yeah, that that's... I, I, I would say for sure, dude. M music's definitely moving... Uh, film music is definitely moving into a... Uh, whole new world of just genres and bending genres too not just you know you're taking you're taking things like hip-hop and now you're mixing it with you know progressive rock and things like that and like it's really cool you know to see it and i think um musically as far as like where we're at in uh mainstream music not even just film music i think we're we're starting to really blur the lines between genres i think it's really cool actually you know because it's like um, you know, a lot of people are in independent artists nowadays and 
cool thing about independent artists is that they don't necessarily usually assign themselves to any kind of specific genre other yeah. than indie, right? Which, mm-hmm. you know, Which mean, is anything. you know better than anybody yeah. that indie is everything. I mean, yeah, yeah. as long as you're not under a label, it can be considered indie. Um, but it's cool because, you know, now you can incorporate that into writing music for movies and stuff, you know? So people won't be as weirded out by hearing a guitar in a movie as they were, you know, 30, 40 years ago. And it's... Is it common for, like, film composers to have like to have contracts with labels is, is that a thing or is it usually just exclusively through um, whatever the licensing company it's the usually film is? yeah it's usually through the licensing licensing company and then also usually through the movie studio they just hire specific composers to write and then you know the director's like oh well you know what's our budget like can we hire a composer mm-hmm. like this or something you know and then they they go about it that way it's not necessarily like you have to be under a label or anything you usually own you don't you own your own publishing, um, you know, but the the usually the studios and stuff, and that's that's one of the other cool things about video game music too is that you know, as a musician, you kind of you kind of become accustomed to this idea that there's really no specific route for you to take. You know, it's just you're a musician, you want to get your music out there. Good luck. And so what's yeah. nice about film music and video game music for me is that it gave me a path. You know, I knew, okay, hmm. I know what I want in the future, and now I know that I can go to college, I can take, you know, music classes, I can do all kinds of different things, I can, you know, reach out to other people, uh, you know, study film. You know, I took a film class um, my first semester at DVC, I took a, a, a film fiction and criticism class because I thought it would, you know, be good for... Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm taking that class next semester. It, yeah, it was okay. Yeah, it was right. Honestly, I don't know if I liked it that much. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, I, I took it because I thought, well, you know, I might as well study film if I'm going to yeah, be writing course, for films. I mean, I obviously, I study film every single time I'm watching them. I'm actively listening a lot of the times to the scores that, you know, even when I go to the movie theaters, it's kind of a curse sometimes. Because mm-hmm. it's like you're sitting there and you're trying to enjoy the movie and then, like, you can't because, like, you're like, damn, the music is really good. You know, you can't, <laughs> yeah. you can't like, you know, put yourself outside of it, so... Dude, I can totally relate to the path thing. That's, like, one thing so scary about starting your own business. Right. It's, it's been very similarly to, like, trying to be a professional musician. Right. There is no path. None. Yeah, None. right. You and, figure and, it out. Yeah, and, and, then, and then, like, you know, you have mentors and people along the way who help guide you, but it's still very, like, it's not like, you know, I want to be a nurse, so I go to nursing school, I get yeah. my degree, and I go find a, you know, I go find a job. It's not like that at all. It's, and, you know, I think that kind of goes for every freelance job Mm -hmm. you know i mean i i feel for every freelance artist out there because it is it is not easy you know not at all i mean what's part of like the unpredictability of putting your music out as like a solo act something that kind of deterred you from it what was that i said like putting was part of the unpredictability of pursuing music as a solo act like yourself part of what deterred you from it like was having that path something that you definitely like searched for and is that why you think you lean towards making uh compositions and trying to score films 100 percent, yeah that 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 is specifically the reason why i got into it i was just like you know what you know i i love playing in bands i love live you know live shows i i love that whole scene it's really fun and i and i want to continue in that whole scene um you know as maybe a hobby but i definitely feel like yeah uh the fact that i figured well you know what, if I can, you know, get credentials and, and, and kind of, you know, I don't know, um, develop myself as a musician to the extent to where I can go to like a, let's say a video game studio and say, here, here's the things I've worked on. Here's my portfolio, you know, and they're like, okay, maybe you have a job, right? Yeah. So now it's like, well, now I'm getting commissioned by these guys. And if they like you, then they keep you. You know yeah. what I mean? Then they're going to want to keep working with you. And now it's not really freelance anymore. It's like I've got specific people, you know, who I'm connected to who like my work and want to work with me. You know, that's one of the really cool things about um, me this last year working with uh, that friend of mine I was telling you about for his film Buried was that it was like, you know, it's cool because it's like now it's like he really he really enjoyed my score. And now it's, you know well, now he wants to work with me for his next couple of projects. And it's like, that's mm-hmm. that, it, that kind of security, knowing that, you know, people will still work with you because you did a good job. You know, it's, it's kind of, 
it's a little bit more predictable than like you know what's my next gig or like i mean uh, when you're first starting out of course when you get to the high level like it doesn't matter what you are you've got a job you know but like when you first start out it's definitely very like just you're going into an unknown 100 percent, you know and so kind of saying i want to be a producer or i want to be a dj or i want to be a composer those are like ways to kind of set yourself on a path you know totally and i think and that path is always it's not straight you know it's definitely not just one straight path because i've noticed you know like i said lately i've been really getting into producing synth pop and doing things like that and producing in general like it's a really big aspect of what i've been doing lately and you know and you can't be a composer nowadays actually without being a producer yeah because you got to be able to produce you know your sounds you got to be able Mm -hmm. to take an entire orchestra and put them into a DAW and somehow not get it to clip (laughs) so and then simultaneously you're also kind of acting as an engineer and that's exactly exactly so it's kind of especially as a composer you do everything so it's like it's been nice you know especially uh these last couple of months I've been really honing in on producing and you know I've kind of taken a break from writing for orchestral instruments and so the other day it's like you know I sat down and I wrote and I was like wow you know this sounds a lot better than like what it sounded like a year ago yeah but it's the same it's basically the same same instrumentals same ideas but it's actually produced better you know so that's a really big deal too when it comes to composition nowadays I mean at, at the level that I'm at you know I mean once you get into the the higher levels, you know, you got audio engineers and they hire specific mm-hmm. people to do that stuff for you. But Outside of that one short film that you did, are you looking to like, or have you like started to look to score more films oh, as of currently? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm totally open for any kind of commissions. I, I, um, if anybody out there needs their, their film scored. Yeah. Exactly. Get David Cook compositions no. on Instagram. 100%. Yeah. I, 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 uh, later let me talk to you about people. I, I might want to, I might want, I might want to connect you with. Yeah. Cause I, I, I know some other people who score films and i i know the way they get projects and stuff Mm -hmm. so i could definitely connect you with them yeah that would be dope that'd Mm -hmm. be sick yeah because that is a big thing is connections you know i mean that's one of the biggest reasons i'm even going to college totally you know you find people that you can work with you know how's that experience been going to community college for music like has that do you think you've benefited from it are you happy you made the decision and are you you're trying to go to music school after gbc Mm -hmm. right yeah no yeah i definitely i i doing college um, doing community college, especially at DVC, it has one of the best music programs, in my opinion, for any community college probably out there. Totally. Um, and it's been really inspiring, you know, being able to, um, for me, you know, because I, I have a hard time kind of sitting down sometimes and saying, okay, this is what I want to work on. You know, this is what I want to do. So it's nice, you know, college kind of gives you that push, that oomph, you know, that you need like, Hey, I want you to, you know, write this, or I want you to, you know, work on your FM synthesis or do something. So it it kind of forces you to have to work on these things. And I feel like since I've started doing college, I feel like I've definitely like gotten a lot better at a lot of things that I was having, having trouble with because, you know, there's only so much you can really learn from like YouTube, you know, and, and, um, and other people and, so it's like when you're taking classes in these things, like I said, you know, specifically at DVC, because they do offer so many awesome music classes. So, yeah, shout out to DVC for their freaking awesome music industry uh, program. Because I'm in it, too. But what's interesting is I'm in the other side of it. Right. Exactly. And you're in the more like the industry side industry of it. Side. Yeah. yeah. So it's like I, I've seen um, I think the music classes that you probably haven't seen and you've seen the ones that I haven't seen. Right. And I think we both can agree on the fact that it's a great program. Like I've, I've learned yeah. so much about what I want to do and I'm, I'm very excited to like keep pursuing my degree more excited than I was when I started it. Right. Exactly. Because it's like it's like you know the people care about you know yeah like they care about you and they and the professors are dope it's it's all good professors and Mm -hmm. it feels like they give a shit you know right exactly yeah no it's definitely cool and then so after dvc i'm thinking about going to uh the conservatory of music in san francisco okay i mean we'll see if i get in but Mm -hmm. you know i mean it's um they've got a really awesome music and technology applied program where they actually work with san mateo studios the sony studios in san mateo and they work on different uh, scores or that like their smaller developers in their studios have, you know, they, they've created <clears throat> these games, these small games, and then they actually commission students from this school to like work on them. And then, they, you know, they're like, we really like what you've done. 
will keep working on you. So, so, you know, that's one of those things that I'm like, definitely, if I can get in, uh, I'm looking forward to because, you know, video game music is another one of those things because, you know, film music is one thing, but video game music is a whole nother world. So are you inspired by video games and film in the same way you are music? Like, have you always been such a big consumer of those? Yeah. Well, yeah, I have been for sure. Um, you know, I mean, I, I think video games, especially, you know, I know it gets a bad rap sometimes, but video games are awesome. I mean, it's just like reading a book, you know, <laughs> in my opinion, it's like yeah. reading a book, except it's mean? like interactive, you know, you actually get to like interact with your world. And That's fair. I think of that in the same way as like documentaries. Right. I feel like people like act as if like you're watching TV, you're watching a movie, you're not necessarily learning, but you definitely can. Yeah, like no. you definitely well, can learn from yeah. things like documentaries or like interactive games that are teaching yeah. you stuff, you know, like it, it's it's kind of dumb that we limit what we think we can learn from to from, books. Yeah, right. Like media. Like I mean, education is changing though, man. Like oh, yeah. everybody, like there's going to be, in 10 years, it's going to be so obsolete to learn something from a book because it's so inefficient compared to taking an online course. Right. Well, yeah. And I mean, you know, a lot of people, I, I think a lot of people, um, you know, like hands on too, you know, mm -hmm. they like being able to actually interact or they like being able to, you know not just cycle through a book and take notes and stuff so and that's another one of those things that is awesome about being a musician you know is it's very hands-on you know everything it's like it's all up to you you know so it's that's but yeah no i would definitely say with video games and and and, and tv and movies and things like that you know like listening to the to the scores as i'm playing them you know i mean you can ask my girlfriend every single time i'm going through a game i'm just like the whole freaking time sometimes it gets annoying for her i'm sure uh -huh. We're just like the whole time. It's just like, wow, I really like that ostinato they put there. I really like that brass, you know? And yeah. it's like, shut up. We're just trying to play the game. It's a really <laughs> funny thing to think of like video game scores, right? Because it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's very, in a lot of ways, I feel like those two worlds are very disconnected. Like oh, yeah. the average consumer of a video game probably does not think at all about the music. Right. Like me, like growing up playing video games, I don't think I ever thought about like right. music behind yeah. it. You know, but it's, then it's there. You know, it's always and, for and every it, game. It's, yeah, and it's and it's what makes the game as well as well as all the other things. You know, well, like I, I mean, again, I'm ignorant in film scores, but I'm even more ignorant in video game scores. But I'm sure everybody in the world tells you this, but one of the most important albums to me like to this day and always has been is is C four eighteen's Minecraft mm -hmm. Minecraft Volume Alpha. Like no, yeah. I. I love that album and it's right. because it reminds me of like growing up and literally be, li yeah. literally being addicted to minecraft Your and like yeah. and it was like all i did man and it, it it's it's crazy to me it reminds me of like not just minecraft but it reminds me of like the random kids i played minecraft with mm -hmm. that lived in like north carolina right or like the random like games i would play with them or like memories i have with them on skype or right like, like the all the experiences speak. you have are tied to that music yeah and that's and that's the beautiful thing about music for films and games is that it creates the experience as much as the game, you know. And so, you know, as humans, when we when we move on through our lives, we hear and we smell things and we see things that eventually help us to, um, you know, to develop memories later on. So you smell, you know, Disneyland. You smell that smell. You know what it smells like, and it, it brings you there. M music, same thing. If you want me, I can turn off the. Can yeah. you? told him not to turn it off <laughs> dude that's like that that's always such a thing for whatever reason these mics they have a knack of like picking up every possible ac in like the neighborhood dude <laughs> you don't have to tell me about it there's times where i'm trying to record um i'm trying to record guitar parts or bass parts or well not bass parts but guitar parts or percussion and stuff and like you can hear like you can hear like somebody outside mowing, mowing their lawn and you can hear like the dog two blocks away it's like yeah. why why aren't you not picking up just my instrument <laughs> yeah. building that equipment and like mics and everything in your whole studio i mean like we see this whole thing behind you right now how long did that take to like where thereabouts um i mean all of this equipment i've i've kind of just gotten over the last i don't know i mean with guitars you know i've been playing guitar for i think 10 years now or so 10 or 11 yeah. years something like that and um so i've kind of you know i've gotten a lot of guitars over the years but as far as like producing equipment and things like that yeah i've kind of just built up my studio f for like the last four or five years maybe or so something like that you know as soon as i started getting into dawes i was like okay 
well, I need to get a good computer, you know? And so it kind of just went on from there and it doesn't stop because <laughs> once you start, you can never stop buying equipment. It's That's like definitely how it is. Being it's, a musician is just detrimental. I've learned to that even with this stuff. Right. Like, like the interviews. Like, right. It's it, like, it, 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 it's, it's like as soon as you buy one thing, you got to get more. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. Bro. Yeah. No, it's a weird, it's a weird thing. And especially with music too, it's like, you know, as a producer, you're always looking for the coolest new sound or the coolest new percussive instrument you can record. And so you're always just looking to get new stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes there's a fine line between like, okay, am I just like a good musician or do I just have really good equipment? Totally. <laughs> you know? yeah, and like, completely. I think a lot of people fall, fall into either one of those categories and, you know, where you get really good people or where they're, you know, fulfilling both, you know, and I know like a lot of people, you know, Another thing that's really hard, as I think about this with, you know, making music and production a lot of times, is that not a lot of people do have access to the equipment, like, you know, that I have, mm -hmm. for example. And I'm, like, super grateful that I have access to this kind of equipment and that I can, you know, get my ideas out, you know, successfully. Um, but I know a lot of people, you know, they can't, they don't have access to the same things, but they have these great ideas, you know. So I, that is another thing to be said about the uh, music, at least just cost of music is like god it needs to go down you know yeah i, I, I mean, don't know how that happens though. people it's just so expensive you know to 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 invest in it's gatekeeped it, yeah it is i mean it is kept i guess basically yeah, yeah it's 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 reserved for only people who you know either are very fortunate you know to have people who can help them out with money or people who are spending all the time working but if you're spending all the time working then you don't have as much time or energy to start writing you know so but i wonder how that changes it, what do you mean like i wonder if there was like an effective way to get the cost of musical equipment to go down like would that how how does that happen i, I don't know I, if there is i think the best solution on might be through like community and mm -hmm. public education driven uh music education yeah no one I, that's um that's one thing you know i've been thinking about a lot is like you know if if we could if we could invest in community centers you know that provide studios for musicians yeah. who like you know don't have access to studios or you know i mean that that's one thing that i always thought was really cool about like libraries for example is like they don't necessarily do music but like they do they do all kinds of other just things, about everything art, else all yeah. kinds of everything you know and so everybody from everywhere can you know do these things but like with music it's not the same there's really no equivalent i mean you have like you have schools where they're focusing on like you know being in a band and stuff but even then you know those things cost like you have to pay like two hundred dollars a month or something like that you, you know? said schools that are focused on being in a band well, yeah, they have, like, especially in our area, they have, like, uh, of School that. of Rock. Have you heard of them? Oh, no, I do. Actually, um, Ian, the, the head writer for the site, he, <laughs> the high school he went to was a School of Rock in St. Louis. Right. So, that was, like, where he went to school. Yeah. And that was always so fascinating to me. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, they have. It's they like have, a movie. They have things like that, but at the same time, it's still, like, it still costs money. You know? Yeah. It's, like, private. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely one of those things that, you know, as I'm starting to build up my equipment and, and, and get into the world of producing and, and mixing and things like that, you start to realize how expensive these things are, you know, yeah. and it makes you wonder, you know, like if they weren't as expensive, you know, how much music would we have out there today? You know, like, mm -hmm. dude, I feel like we would well, have... think about how much we have already. Right. And I mean, and, and music wasn't like always this accessible. Like, I mean, the, the invention of uh, you know, DAWs, digital audio workstations, mm -hmm. um, along with MIDI and things like that, you know, I mean, you know, you can, you can have, you can have a laptop and a, a little, you know, little 24 kit, 24 key keyboard on your bed and you could write an entire album. Yeah. You know, I mean, look at Grimes, look at some, totally. I mean, they, they, they just locked themselves in their rooms and just wrote entire albums just with a tiny little keyboard and a, and a laptop. You know? Or like Mad Lib, who produced it, the entirety of Bandana on an iPad. On an iPad. Like, yeah. what? Yeah. You know, so yeah, that, that stuff's... It, it's it's um, it's a lot more accessible than it used to be, but it, it could be more. I, I definitely think it could be more. So that's, that's one of those things, you know. How did you originally get started playing guitar because i know that's where everything stemmed from mm -hmm. so what were your like early musical um interests like and how did you first start playing um so i mean i i i've always been 
uh, like a pretty musical kid. Mm-hmm. You know, my dad, he's a piano player. And so, um, you know, my whole life he was putting on, and not only is he, you know, a piano player, but he listens to a lot of music. So, you know, I was listening to just albums from anywhere from the 50s to, you know, metal, you know, it's just like anything. So, you know, that helped just hearing so many different genres of music, you know, and if you asked anybody who knows me today, like what my favorite genre is, they probably wouldn't be able to tell you because I listen to like, I mean, like everything because of that you know i wasn't always like that but i i am now but you know as far as starting out musically i think you know i saw my dad play the piano and i i was kind of interested you know and um i i think i dabbled in like lessons on piano a little bit and i hated it i really didn't like it at Uh all and then um i kept telling my mom like i want to play guitar i want to play guitar so one of her coworkers had like an old acoustic that oh really yeah so she he gave it to her just for free? That, just for free. That's such a cool way to start. Right, yeah, and that's what that's what I started on. Was kind of reminds me how I started playing drums. Right, exactly. Yeah. Like, you, you just, you know, people, you know, strings get pulled, and eventually you end up with some kind of instrument. Uh-huh. Um, so how old were you when you got that free guitar? Uh, I think I was, like, 10 oh, or wow, 11, okay. you know? So I was playing, I think, the first couple of things I played. I, I played a lot of Nirvana when I first started out. I don't know why. I think it's just... 10? No, like 11 or 12. Cause, that's well because badass. Well, because it's like they're easy to play on guitar. Yeah. You know, it's power chords. Uh-huh. Like, um, Kurt Cobain's guitar playing, you know, was like... It's not really what he was Very known for. easy. Yeah, yeah exactly. It, it was his singing and his energy that he was known for. And but, his songwriting. And... Right, exactly. But, so it was like, that was what I started on playing that. And then, you know, eventually... So you were completely at that time just teaching yourself mm-hmm. as you went? 100%. I've, I've pretty much always been self-taught i mean here and there i've I've, um since then i've taken like lessons kind of you Uh know and and then i was in jazz band in high school and that was huge that was really big for learning a lot of different uh things you know jazz theory and things like that but yeah and you know i i had that acoustic and then i moved on eventually i got an electric my dad um he had gotten a new job apparently like he had he got a new job Uh, It was like a mining job and it was paying a lot. And like, he was Mm -hmm. like, you know, you've been really into guitar and I'm like, you know, do you want an electric? You know, I was like, (laughs) yeah, I do, you know? And he was like, well, you want a Fender? I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Most people just get like squires right (laughs) up in me, you know? And I was like, okay, sure. And, you know, he got it for me and it was like, right as soon as I got that guitar, it was just like a whole world opened up, you know? And I think, um, my biggest inspiration when I first started playing guitar was the blues and funk. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, you know, it, it, it's just got so much feel, energy. you know, so much feel and energy and, and you can just groove so hard. And it's like, I loved that when I first started out, just being able to, and you know, improvising as well was a really big thing. You know, I notice a lot of people when they first start playing, they don't bother like learning scales and things like that. And I think that's so important. You have to learn those things because, once you learn those things, you can start to create your own things, you know, yeah. and you can start to solo and do things like that. And so I, I, you know, I was playing lead guitar. Um, mostly I, I still kind of just like playing solos, leads, things like that. But, um, you know, and then I kind of progressed. I, I played with, I played with, um, a couple of friends in middle school. If you remember mm-hmm. like Gabe and yeah. Gabe and I used to, we used to throw on like Metallica backing tracks yeah, yeah, yeah. on YouTube on like a PA and then we'd just play along to it, <laughs> you know, and we'd just have such a good time. And then I kind of moved on eventually and we kind of, I started that band and our, uh, Angel Rebus and I started that band, uh, the Rescue Band in freshman year. Uh, excuse me for my weird talking. I, I suck at talking by the way, <laughs> but really? um, what do you mean? I don't... Oh, I don't know. I stutter a lot. But, uh, not as much as me, <laughs> but, uh, we started a band freshman year and I, it was a lot of fun, you know, first uh-huh. right out the gate. It was a lot of fun, you know, just having somebody else to play guitar with and, um, to write songs and worked on that throughout high school. And then, uh, you know, I, I think I explained before what happened. We kind of it just fallen out, whatever. And then that's when I got into jazz band, um, and then I played in jazz band for two years in high school, and that was awesome. That was a really good experience for me because, you know, learning jazz chords, and I was kind of like out of, I, it was really weird how I got in. I didn't even really audition. It was mm-hmm. just our, our band teacher at the time 
um, knew of me because I was in the guitar classes at our school. And so she like knew of me apparently. And then, the legend of David Cook. Right. Yeah, I guess so. And so she knew of me. And then um, she talked to Ronnie, my girlfriend, and uh, she was like, she was like, get, get David here. I want to see if he can play jazz band with us. I was like, okay. So I, I, I remember the audition. It was so, it wasn't even like an audition. I literally went into the room. She had like this, Dude, and, and, and to give you a picture of how this went is, like, I didn't really have that much knowledge on music theory whatsoever. Uh-huh. The most I knew was, like, very simple music theory. And so she pulls out this, like, this like chart that's in, like, 5-4 or something. Yeah. It was, like, some really weird, odd time signature. She was like, just try to play this for me. And I was like, right out the gate, I was like, I'm going to give you a disclaimer. I just looking at it, I know I cannot play that, but I will try. And I, I tried. I gave it, my, I gave it my best. But she still let me in, and then you know we eventually. I played with. This is off the new Tool album. Why don't you play <laughs> this for me? Yeah, right. Here's Numa. Oh, okay. Uh, thanks. This is Dream Theater. For you, so. <laughs> but yeah, so we. Um, I was in jazz band for two years, and then I actually played in the pit, the pit orchestra for our our school's. Um, our school's musical, the Susical, and that was that was actually a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, pit, playing guitar in a pit orchestra is something I feel like every guitarist who actually cares about being a guitarist should try. Yeah. For sure. It's so much fun. You know? I mean, I had to learn, it was like 50-something songs. Jesus. And, you know, it was like all... That's, sh- uh, that's crazy. Yeah, it was all sheet music, and it was all... Um, but you know, I, I mean, fifty songs. Some of them I weren't even. I wasn't even playing, and you know. But you still but, like know them, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you you know, I would go through them, and I would kind of like half sight read them and half know what I'm doing whenever we would go to our concerts and stuff. And we did that, and then, you know, I mean, I've kind of just since since high school, I think I've played. I I am always gonna play guitar because it's my first instrument. But you know, I mean, I've kind of played it here and there I, I feel like I've gotten kind of better but I definitely I, I know that I'm not investing myself in being as good of a guitarist as I possibly can because of you know focusing on film composition and producing and things like that yeah you know so I've kind of you know stopped really progressing as a guitarist maybe I don't know you know who knows I mean consistently like playing every week you know for years i'm sure eventually you're gonna get better even if you're not doing like lessons and stuff but you know i mean now that i'm better you know now that i'm at a level where i'm like okay and i think a lot of people get to this level when they're like uh, when they start to reach the end like the the latter half of like being an in- intermediate musician on their yeah. instrument is that they start to realize like well what do I do now? Like, I don't, you know, I don't know what to do because I've learned everything I think. And then, you know, you have to start writing, I guess. Yeah. Now, well, now you have to get into the advanced stuff, you know, uh-huh. and like that's when you have to start taking lessons and stuff because, you know, you can be a self-taught musician, um, for a very long time. And I mean, I know self-taught musicians who never took a single lesson in their lives and, you know, who are better than most people who have taken lessons. But yeah. I think for a lot of self-taught musicians, there comes a time and I could be wrong, you know, I don't know. I just know as far as for me, there eventually comes a time where it's like, okay, now I'm going to probably have to have some kind of intervention, some kind of lessons I can do in order to understand this instrument better, you know, and that's kind of where I'm at now. Um, so, but yeah, that, that's kind of the progression of where, where I've been as a guitarist. Um, and yeah. So. Have you began taking lessons? Like, are you taking lessons now? I'm not taking lessons at the moment. I, mm-hmm. I did um I did private lessons with one of the professors at at DVC um uh like basically like I think it was my first semester there, and that was cool. You know, I t- I learned a bunch of weird jazz theory. That's the thing, you know, jazz theory. Once you get into jazz theory, that's like when like that's when stuff starts to get pretty advanced. Yeah. You know? Because you're like, okay, now I'm like messing around with all kinds of weird, you know cadences and things like that when you're building like a, either a composition or trying to produce something do you find that you actually fall back on your theory a lot or is it something you don't use that much um i i think lately i've really fallen back on theory yeah oh, wow. um you know just understanding how how chords work understanding like you know as a guitarist especially understanding the structure of chords and how you can solo around that structure is definitely one of the biggest um 
one of the biggest things as as far as it's like being a jazz guitarist any jazz guitarist will tell you you know you have to focus on the chord changes in order to know what you're soloing you know and um i i, I mean i think when i'm writing for uh like when i'm composing and stuff uh you know orchestral music it's it's a completely different world you know and it's completely different theory than i think i've learned i know a lot of jazz theory but you know like when it comes to like counterpoint and traditional like you know classical theory mm. i'm like totally lacking and and i'm okay with that <laughs> like i i i would i would uh i could go my whole life not taking um theory classes and i'd, I'd be okay <laughs> i i don't like music theory very have much. you taken theory dvc yeah it's i like took theory one it yeah, was like a different language it's, it's crazy it's huh? hard yeah bro. theory theory's tough you know i mean it's definitely tough not but you know you don't need it you don't need it. It helps 100%. I will tell you it yeah. helps for sure. Every musician, I think, would benefit from knowing theory, but you don't need it nowadays. I mean, anything, you know, like seven chords, things like that, you can just learn on YouTube nowadays. Mm -hmm. You know, but it definitely helps having an a, a education in theory um, for sure. How many instruments do you, like, play in most of your compositions? Like, are you doing everything, essentially, or are you more or less just, like, relying on, like, piano and guitar or well you... like w compositions like you mean like um like just like your typical songwriting stuff or like film compositions film compositions film compos so um my process when coming when it comes to writing film compositions is so you know i like having uh every section of the orchestra so i do percussion woodwinds brass and strings um and then i over the pandemic I managed to get uh, the BBC Symphony Orchestra sample library from Spitfire, which is a really good sample library, and uh, it was pretty pricey, but I've been using that, and so my process is usually I try to kind of develop strings, you know, first, kind of figure out which chords I'm working with, and then I try to expand on that with the brass, and then I bring woodwinds in. Woodwinds... I've noticed when I write with woodwinds, not everybody's like this, but when I write with woodwinds, I use them almost as like, you know, when you're listening to like a song and you hear like that, that those small like little things in there that kind of the ear candy, you know, that you mm -hmm. like, especially if you're listening through headphones. Like embellishments. Right. That's kind of what I use woodwinds for. And then, you know, I'll, I'll throw in like, um, like I said, you know, hybrid stuff, uh, you know, so if I'm like working with an orchestra, um, or an orchestral piece I've written, and I'm like, you know what? This would sound really cool if it had like a drone, like a really low drone or something. Then I can bring in like an FM synthesizer and program that and then play that underneath mm -hmm. the actual orchestra. Um, and then I occasionally, you know, I'll, piano, I always start, usually I always start with just a piano part. I'll play, you know, something on the piano and then I'll be like, okay, how can I, how can I translate that into strings? Because that's how arrangement kind of is. Or orchestration it's a pretty complicated thing and there's a lot of different ways to go about orchestrating, you know, for, um, for entire compositions. Um, you know, like I said, and a lot of people have different methods. I think, like I said, for me, my main method is I'll write everything on the piano and then I move it into, you know, the orchestra and then I'll usually afterwards, that's when I can bring in synthesizers and stuff like that. If I want to like add other kind of aspects um, but I, I find myself typically actually writing just traditional orchestra, like orchestral stuff, you know, not really hybrid as often. But Did you, um, like, ever sit down and try to learn the piano? Or did, did you just kind of learn it, like, by... I just, I don't know. So a lot, I, I've talked to people who just have learned a bunch of instruments, and eventually you kind of just, like, you just, learn how to play the piano. That's, um, yeah, that's kind of how it happened. I mean, I like I said, I did lessons when I was younger, and I hated it. And then, um... My dad's a pianist, so that really helps. But yeah. I've learned like a lot of his songs on on piano. Actually, I have one of his songs on my website. It's called Until We Meet, I believe. Shout out so, your website yeah. real quick. Where, oh, yeah, where, where should sure. I find your website? It's uh, davidcookcompositions.com. Mm -hmm. It's very, very simple. Just David Cook <laughs> Compositions. I was like, thank God I got this URL. Um, but yeah, no, and then my website's really cool, actually. That's a whole other thing. I, I put a lot of work into my website. What kind of um, stuff do you have on there? I, I just, I have my portfolio, basically, mm -hmm. I, you know, um, I try to update it as often as I can, but I, I just put a lot of the work that I'm currently 
you know, working on on there so that if somebody wants to work with me, you know, then they can go on my website and they can actually access that stuff and be like, hey, I really like this song from your portfolio. It matches kind of what vibe I'm going for, you know. You know, it's a potential client right there. Do so. you actively, like, reach out to people that you think you might want to work with or do you ever, like, find yourself posting, like, you know, a composition you might make, like, on your Instagram or whatever and say, oh, like, if you want something similar to this, mm-hmm. like, hit me up. Um, no, I haven't done that recently, but that's actually a good idea. Uh-huh. I'm gonna try that. Yeah, because, you know, that's one thing I'm not very good at is, like, marketing and, like, you know. I get it. I'm not, I'm, that's, like, there. where I'm not the best at either. Yeah, I think that's definitely one of the biggest things I struggle with as a musician is that aspect of music where I, I, I like, getting myself out there and making sure people know me. That's especially, like, one of the reasons why I'm so appreciative of this inter- interview. Because, of course, bro. you know, it's really cool to be able to have an outlet to be able to, like, talk about my stuff and, mm-hmm let people in on like my world you know because i i'm not very good at expressing that through social media and stuff like that you know i do have an instagram and i am trying and youtube and i'm trying to post consistently on there but it does it does get kind of tough sometimes finding like okay well i posted a picture of my studio last week you know what am i gonna do this week you know or i posted a oh there's daisy that's it's my girlfriend's dog. She's crazy. Hey, Daisy. Yeah. Everybody say, hey, da- hey Daisy. Hey, Daisy. <laughs> Type, hey, Daisy in the chat. Hey. <laughs> um, Daisy. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, what were we saying? Okay, You're talking about uh, marketing. Marketing, right. Um, so, it's it's tough, because I, I have a hard time finding what I want to do with my ideas sometimes. Take my plane off. I find that, like, I, I've said this in interviews before, and I know people probably heard this, but... I find that you either are naturally very good at making music Mm -hmm. or you're naturally very good at pushing your music and it is very rare that somebody is naturally good Good at at both. both. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of like, that's kind of like, you you just have to get good at one. Right. And if you're like a really good musician, right. And you suck at marketing, then I guess it's time to start looking for somebody who's good at it because I mean, true. I mean, I try to, I try to like, I, I kind of pride myself on wanting to do everything myself. I don't know. I'm yeah, kind of it. stubborn. That way, I you know, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of having to outsource for everything I want to do. So like, you know, my, my, my videos, I edit all those myself, you know, and, and, um, you know, thumbnails, I do that all in Photoshop, you know. So it's like, you know, I like being able to do those things on my own, but it definitely gets tiring sometimes for sure when you're just like, when you're like, well, I just want to write music, you know, like, yeah. and I wish that I could write music and people could see it without me having to go through all these other steps, you know, and especially it gets tough, you know, uh, with technology too, is, you know, you set up a camera, you're taking all this time and then the battery. Or, you know, like, yeah, or your SD card's something. full. Or, yeah. like, there's always something. So it, Trust it, me, I feel that. It's tough because, especially, you know, when, when you when you just want to get your stuff out there, you know, it's it gets in the way. But, you know, it's 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 one small hurdle, you know? I mean... True. It, it, it's, in my opinion, it's like, okay, you know, either, you know, you can sit there and be, like, upset that you have to do those things or just learn how to do them and get it done with, you know? And figure it out. That's how I feel it about it. Right, exactly, you know? I mean... And there's classes, you know, I mean, even there's community classes you can take. I, I know that Concord, where we live, in, or I don't know if I'm... Go ahead. I, I, do you edit this, by the way? Uh, yeah. But kind of? Yeah. Okay. A little bit. I don't know if I'm allowed you to can, say I don't give a live. shit. I don't, well, okay. So Concord... We live we, in Concord, California. Yeah. Concord, where we live, sorry. Concord, where we don't live. Don't kill us. Don't, don't kill don't us. Don't murder us. Is anybody don't. out there... I know, I know there's only 200,000 people in Concord, but don't find us, okay? Please don't. No. Anyway. <laughs> Absolutely not. But um, I know, like, Concord, for example, we have a, a really awesome community center where they offer classes and, like, Photoshop and things like that. So I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. We, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have... I wish I knew that when I was trying to learn Photoshop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Instead of teaching it to myself. Yeah. No, yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of resources out there for people who want to, like, get into this field but don't know where to start, you know? Um. But yeah, that's, that's, that is a, that is one of the things, you know, social media and, you know, and then another thing is I notice I, I feel like as a musician, uh, you can fall into the trap of tying your self-worth, especially in a digital age to like how many streams you get or how many views totally. you get. And, and that's really, that can be so detrimental 
to your career as a musician if if you if you're completely reliant on like making sure you're getting enough streams or views i've noticed that myself is like i i come to find like like when i'm uploading videos on youtube or i'm you know i put something on my website I, like a lot of times that thought pops in my mind i'm like well why am I putting so much work into this? How many people are even going to see this? You I know? feel that, man. Totally. You know? So it, it, it gets kind of, it, it is tiring sometimes in that aspect. But, you know, at the end of the day, and you know better than anybody, is like, you just got to keep going and eventually, hopefully, you know, if you're doing something right, you know, the, the views and the streams will come, you know. So, and then with composition too, is like, I, that's another thing that's also nice about composition is that I'm not necessarily too tied to like okay well how many streams am i getting or like whatever you know i like it's like yeah it's not very it's not as big of a genre right yeah. exactly so it's like it's cool because it's like you know i i know that my website's there and i know that if people want to reach out to me then i have all of my information there you know and that that's one of the cool things is like you know you know it, it, it's more or less for me about making sure people like see my stuff you know because like it you can write a ton, but if nobody sees it, it doesn't really matter, you know? So that's, that's a really big thing. And, you know, um, I think that, I think that's just something I got to work on, you know, keep working on and keep trying to fight for and get more, get more, uh, get more of an audience and things like that. Because, you know, there is an audience out there for these kinds of things. It's just, you have to find them, you know, because totally. especially like, you know, when it comes to, like, when you're a typical songwriter, for example, like, I find that, you know, let's say you, you, know, you play indie, for example, or R&B, and, you know, you have people who really like R&B, and they're going to listen to your stuff, but as a composer, it's like, you not everybody's going to listen to orchestral music, so it's like, you kind of have to just hope that somebody, the right person sees that, and, you know, they're a good connection or something. It's not about, yeah. it's not about, like, how many people are listening, it's who's listening you know totally so that's that's one of the biggest things that i kind of try to focus on and if they want to listen to you somewhere they can find you somewhere your spotify your website everything let's wrap yeah, this up on uh, yeah no for sure my on my instagram i've got um i've got all the links to uh i have the here now link so you can check out i have a very recent uh release actually it's a single it's kind of bluesy rock you know that kind of vibe and then as we said earlier, I have my website at davidcookcompositions.com that you can totally check out all of my portfolio stuff. And I am definitely trying to update that as frequently as I can so that people can make sure they're seeing, you know, stuff that's recent, you know, because yeah. I, I don't like putting, I don't like having a bunch of old stuff because it's not, you know, relative to how I play today. So yeah, dude. So yeah, that's I feel like we could talk forever. I feel like cause I have so many more things to I talk know. to you about well, on, on another interview when I have more battery life. We yeah, really right. Will, we will sit down and talk all this up because I want to talk about your new single and everything. Yeah. We'll definitely get another, another one of these in soon. Yeah, for sure. No, for sure. I'd be down. All right, man. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah, of course. Thank you, dude. Thank you.